Okay, so here we're going to talk about meiosis. Uh, meiosis is cell division which occurs in the sex cells, uh, so that's over only in the um, in, uh, in animals in the uh, testes or in the ovaries. Um, and it's <coughs> what happens is the uh, the diploid number of chromosomes is reduced to the haploid number. Uh, sometimes that's called 2n and that goes to n. So in the case of human beings we have 23 pairs so um, meiosis results in 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 being reduced to just 23. <coughs> now the, the stages of, of meiosis are of, uh, of um, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase are very similar to um, mitosis um, uh, and but of course mitosis leads to identical cells with meiosis doesn't. Mitosis doesn't lead to reduction in the number of chromosomes, meiosis does. But right so here I've missed out prophase. Prophase is where the uh, homologous pairs pair up and I've now written this is metaphase here. Metaphase is when the homologous chromosomes um, uh, line up on the equator of the cell ready to be separated. Um, uh, here we have got, uh, right, so we've got, uh, I've drawn the the red chromosome, just, I've drawn this cell with only two pairs to make it simple, I'm not going to draw 23 pairs, so just drawn two uh, two pairs. We've got a long chromosome and a short one, so you can see the, see the two long ones I've, I've joined up together, say that the red, let's say that's the maternal and the blue is, is the paternal, uh, the one that's come from the person's father. Uh, and likewise with these two short ones. Uh, anaphase then, this is anaphase occurring and here we are getting separation of the homologous chromosomes. Do we get the homologous chromosomes are not genetically identical to each other. Um, they all contain, uh, they contain different alleles of a gene. So they've got the same gene, but different alleles which are versions of that gene. Okay. So for example you might have a an allele there on that chromosome which is giving a person brown eyes and you've got an allele on that one from a homologous chromosome which is saying you have blue eyes. Okay. Right so there's anaphase and then here we have telophase. This is the first division of meiosis. Telophase uh, where the, the, se the chromosome separation of the, the two homologous chromosomes is complete and the cytoplasm is starting to pinch in. Um, and here we've got the two cells which are reduced, which, which are produced from the first division of metaphase, so this, uh, of meiosis, sorry. So this is meiosis one. And here we have got these cells. Um, these have got the N number, the haploid number of chromosomes. So we have separated the homologous pairs. Now in mitosis two, the second division, so I've drawn here. So here's the, in the so here's the the two cells which are uh, resulting from the first division. So mitosis one has given rise to these two cells, and it's just got the n number. And in mitosis meiosis two, the two chromatids are separated from each other. So here you can see the the chromosomes lining up. Um, uh, at the equator of the cell. So this would be a metaphase here. And the, the two chromatids are joined uh, at the centromere. So there's the centromere of that one. Uh, right, the second division occurs, I won't draw all the steps of it, and you end up with these um, different gametes here. Now, in the sperm, you, one cell will lead to, you've got four gamete cells produced that in the sperm. But in the egg, what happens is only one of them actually makes a viable gamete. These others, the, the, they don't get much cytoplasm, these ones, they just get the, the chromosomes and they go on to form things called polar bodies, which are kind of little tiny sort of rudimentary cells and they get they they kill themselves by apoptosis and you you just get one um 
one egg produced from the um, from the two divisions. Whereas in the sperm, you will get all four produced. Right now, th that's the basic mechanics of meiosis. But I haven't I haven't talked much about how meiosis can lead to the generation of a lot of genetic diversity. So if you think about two siblings, they are never, unless they're identical twins, they're always very different to each other. Okay. Now that's obviously as a result of different uh, gametes coming together at fertilization, but it's also as a result of what happens at meiosis. And we're going to have a look at that uh, now. We just go to this diagram here. Right. Okay. So now, this is this is our this is our cell. This is two different things could happen. We could have this one happening, number one here, or we could have number two happening. They could, they both are equally likely to happen. And it's the way the chromosomes line up at the equator here. You can see the chromosomes lining up. Now you can see the way the chromosomes, the homologous chromosomes are lined up in number one. We've got a red and a blue on one side whereas if you look at number two we've got two reds on one side and two blues on the other side so uh, uh, it's different it, the, the, these two possibilities are equally likely and this is called the independent assortment of chromosomes and it has quite a big effect so independent assortment of chromosomes means that the chromosomes just they're just random the way they do it where they the way they which side of the cell they appear on now i've only got two chromosomes there but of course human beings have 23 pairs not two pairs and you can see with two pairs the, the 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 well let's see what happens with two pairs anyway so in this situation right we end up with a gamete here with a a long red and a short blue here We've got a long blue and a short red. Here they're both red, here they're both blue. So four different gametes can result from uh, one cell. Um, so one cell, if it's got two chromosomes, two pairs of chromosomes can give rise to four different gametes. Now you can imagine with three chromosomes, then you're going to get even more possibilities. It will actually give you, if you've got uh, three pairs, if you do all the little diagrams, you'll see you could end up with eight possibilities. And the formula here, what we're doing is it's the number of chromosomes n, uh, sorry, it is, it is two to the power of the number of chromosomes n. Uh, that's the number of different gametes. So if I do two to the power of 23, sorry, um, on a calculator, that gives me uh, 800,300, okay. Sorry, is that 800,000? No, it's not, it's 8 million. 8 million, sorry. It's about 8.3 million, let's just call it that. So there's 8.3 million possibilities there. There's a lot. 8.3 possible different million gametes are, are possible with 23 pairs of chromosomes. So if you think about then two individuals mating, right? So uh, one, the, the male can produce, um, sorry. That the male can produce um, 8.3 million different gametes, and the female can produce uh, 8.3. Then the probability, the number of different offspring that they can produce, is actually 8.3 million times 8.3 million, which is Uh, 6.9 times 10 to the 13, okay, which is a an enormous number. 6.9 times 10 to the 13. So that's two people. Um, that's the number of different, um, theoretically, the different number of different, genetically different individuals they could make. But in actual fact, this number is 
this is actually wrong it's even bigger than that because we haven't talked about something else which we need to talk about now we've only talked about this independent assortment of chromosomes and that can lead to an enormous variation in the number in the different gametes being produced but there's something else called crossing over uh, or genetic recombination so we need to have a look at that so i've drawn that here okay so we just rub out this okay so here let's have a look at this cell which is about to undergo the first division of meiosis it's metaphase the the chromosomes have lined up on the equator <clears throat> but if you look here you can see the chromosomes are actually touching each other and you can see this happening in a microscope um, you, you can physically see it and i've drawn them uh, just touching one place there they're, they're called chiasmata these places where they where they touch and what happens is if you look at this next diagram here now is where they've touched you can see that some of the they've swapped over little bits so you can see that this red this was formerly just all red this chromosome but you can see now it's got a little blue bit on one chromatid and it's swapped its little red bit over to the blue chromosome so this again with independent assortment of chromosomes and this crossing over can lead to even greater variation because <clears throat> every time meiosis occurs you're going to get a different crossing over you know crossing over could happen here or it could happen here or here and i've only drawn one crossing over event per chromosome whereas frequently you can see two or three or even four crossing overs for the same chromosome again i've only drawn two pairs of homologous chromosomes there's actually 23 so the, the the possibilities are kind of endless so here you can see we've after the first division of meiosis we have got that cell and that cell and in the second division you're going to separate the um cyst, the the chromatids from each other of course these chromatids are no longer identical because we've had some crossing over events occurring um you know there's crossing over here so they're no longer identical so again you get further variation these these are the four possibilities i've drawn here but there are, there are other possibilities depending on how those homologous chromosomes line up on the equator not homologous sorry these these chromatid the, the two chromosomes line up on the equator and depending on how they line up there are, there are further possibilities so meiosis then is uh leads to an enormous um generation of almost endless combinations of genes and endless you know an infinite number of possibilities when we looked at independent assortment we thought yeah you know it's eight million that's quite a lot but it's actually an awful lot more than that because you get these crossing over events occurring as well